Um, and now I'll hand over to Shak, uh, Neil, and Shiva Kumar. Okay, Indra, thank you very much. Uh, and welcome to everybody once more. Welcome, Neil. Haven't seen you for a while. Uh, we'll go, and you're looking very well. And I think Shiva is ready for us. Shiva. Hi, Shak. Uh, it's nice to come back again. And uh, I, actually, a lot of uh, Cat Lab people here are uh, uh, very uh, happy to know that Neil has joined this session. Uh, Neil has been part of this organization for many, many years. He used to come every year for all the ACT sessions, and uh, uh, many of the old uh, uh, Cat Lab staff fondly remember him when he used to come and do a lot of cases during the months of June, July, and August. Neil, uh, uh, welcome to you. And uh, Thank you, Shiva. Please yeah. pass on my uh, best wishes to everybody there. Yeah, I think you've taken, yeah, you've, taken, you've taken over a fantastic group of people and a wonderful Cat Lab with a great work ethic, and I'm sure you're teaching them a lot, and I'm sure they're teaching you a lot too. So yeah, please, sure. Sure. best regards to all of you there. Yeah, before I go to the PowerPoint, I want to tell you one thing. Ajit and uh, Ravi, they specially told me that uh, they should convey their special regards to you. Yeah, the sister, sister Teresia Ma, she, has, she actually pumps in inside and says, hi, this is hi to Neil. Hi, sir. Hello. Good morning. Good afternoon. Sorry. Good afternoon. Good, afternoon. Good, evening. Th Good evening. Thanks a lot. Actually, there are there are so many fans for Neil here in this hospital, and so it's quite nostalgic to know that Neil is uh, moderating this session. Can I have the Shiva. PowerPoint, please? Sh Shiva. Yes. Let me get on with it. Shiva, <laughs> you you can have Neil. We'll send him over to you. You can keep him. <laughs> okay. PowerPoint, please. This is a 31-year-old male with tetralogy of fallow who had intracardiac repair in 2007. A bovine pericardial patch closure of the VSD was done, and uh, there was a pericardial patch augmentation of the RVOT. He was identified to have a small residual VSD. He was lost then for many years. He remains asymptomatic, but uh, he has quite a large heart now. Uh, his uh, LALV was very dilated because of the residual VSD. Next picture. Uh, this is a CTR uh, showing around 60% with plethora. Next. ECG showing the usual right bundle branch block pattern and a left anterior hemi block that is commonly seen in tetralogies. Next, LALV was dilated. LV Z scores were coming to 3.5, and uh, and uh, the uh, LV uh, uh, was substantially dilated. There was a uh, the 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 bovine pericardium that was used uh, was uh, very echogenic, and hence it was not giving us great pictures. However, we thought that it is somewhere around 9 millimeters. Show the previous picture. Show the previous previous slide. Yeah. So uh, we, we can appreciate here the, 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 this is a short axis view. A very calcified looking, thick, echogenic looking uh, pericardial patch. And on the uh, 10 o'clock position, there is a 9 millimeter residual VSD. Next. And uh, uh, so we, it, is, it was abutting the aortic valve. There was a trivial aortic regurgitation. Next. So this is a transesophageal echocardiography. We can see that it is below the right coronary cusp. There is a color flow at around 9 o'clock position in this view. Next. Uh, the, the, this is the ventricular septal defect. We are measuring around 9 to 10 millimeters. Next picture. Next. Okay. So we did a QPQS today just prior to the intubation. and. Uh, the pulmonary artery saturation is 92% and the mixed venous saturation is around 80, giving a QP by QS of 2.2 is to 1. The pulmonary artery pressures were normal. Uh, we got a little bit of LV angiograms just to prior to this. Show the, show the first LV angiogram. Uh, uh, if, if you show the first frame, a little bit of calcium is there, even though it's, uh, it's visible to us very easily, but I don't know at a far distance whether you'll be able to see the the bovine pericardium is showing some calcification. It's like a pouch. And on the superior edge of the pouch, there is a residual VSD, which is close to the right cusp. Uh, this is in a 60-20 projection, LAO. We wanted to separate out the VSD far better, so I did a couple of more angiograms. Next is 45. Uh, here again, uh, uh, freeze this picture. Uh, go to the next frame. Next frame. Okay. So the, 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 there is a VSD that comes off. There is a superior limb that goes and hits against the right ventricular infundibulum and somewhere it stops. But inferiorly, there is a pouch that comes down. 
keep running now, which is parallel to the pericardial patch. Uh, can you freeze it now and show uh, Pra uh, Prabhu? Okay, show uh, frame by frame. Okay, see the the uh, the uh, the. Hey, we, can, we can see it nicely. You move. You move on. Oh, move. thank you, thank Very you. Very nice angiogram. Thanks, thanks a lot. Okay, so it is a it is an uh, it's a jet that is directed a little inferiorly. Uh, next picture. Uh, so this is at around 45. Uh, uh, like basically, I wanted to see whether there is an aortic root distortion. So I put in the catheter into the right sinus and made an injection. There is not much of right coronary cusp uh, deformity. Uh, there was a very trivial leak on the echocardiogram, not much visible on angiography. Next. And uh, this is the last picture that I did, which probably showed the VSD better. 76 uh, LAO. Uh, freeze it. Okay. Go back. So, so this was this was uh, a yeah, residual VSD that is coming off just below the right cusp. Uh, it hits against the RV anterior wall and gets directed inferiorly, 90 degree turn, and then uh, it's filling the right ventricle. The uh, as I mentioned earlier, the QPQS is 2.2 is to one. Uh, I exchanged it into a uh, the pigtail into a right coronary catheter. Next picture. What happened was the it the, the right coronary catheter as I was just gen gently torquing it walked in uh, into the VSD. So I did not want to uh, again cross it in front of everybody. So I, I just stored this fluoro. This is where now we are. We have okay. uh, the, the, with the yes. Uh, just uh, let us uh, ask uh, some of the panel about uh, if they have any concerns about the location of the VSD and how they would go about it. Tin first. Are you happy with the pictures you've seen, the rims, and uh, so and the show the, the previous picture. Hi, uh, Neil. Hi, hi, Shaq. It's very complicated uh, morphology. I think it's a multiple A6 and uh, very close to the aortic. It's just an aortic valve. And uh, uh, really, for, for, for me, uh, the morphology is until now is not so clear. I think. Uh, Show the uh, show the v VSD. Yes, Tin, we will show you again. Uh, yeah. Show that you seven. Can boot the you can boot a sheet and do angel again. Maybe we get can get more information about the morphology. Okay, okay, I'll do that. And uh, Warakan? Yo, Chuck, thanks for having me. And ho hello, Neil and M. Shiva. Um, again, um, 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 you know, really, really uh, challenging um, anatomy. Uh, again, I, I would I would uh, emphasize what Tin mentioned. Uh, we need to put the sheath in, and then we do angio. But in this particular case, uh, I would prefer to put the sheath into the left ventricle. Um, that's because it's very marginal area that we can deal with uh, when we um, you know deploy the device. Uh, so I I probably we will put the sheath into the LV, and then we do angio, and then we see again okay. how does it look. And Amitab, any views? Any thoughts? Uh, Amitab, are you there? Yes, um, Amitab, you're, you're um, muted. Can you unmute your... Yeah, yeah. Uh, my main concern was the distance from the aortic valve. There was the, no... The distance of the VSD from the aortic valve because that... it would, uh, particularly some uh, other people would have the... slightly more useful to study yeah. the distance because uh, I was Amitab, a little concerned about the... Amitab, yeah. the there... distance in metric system is zero. Zero, yeah. So Shiva and the rest of the panelists, there's a question from the audience, and they would like to know whether you think it's a good idea to cross it from the right side, uh, from the right ventricle. Uh, the, actually, the, she can you show that same picture, 7520 again? Uh, just watch this image, uh, the previous one. Uh, see the, the complexity of the entry. We are having the, the VSD course immediately below the right cusp, initially taking a trajectory towards 9 o'clock. Uh, and then makes a turn inferiorly to 6 o'clock, and then it exits. So I am not very confident I will be able to cross it so effectively. I will be wasting a lot of uh, fluoroscopic time. Uh, okay. Let's uh, keep so moving then, Shiva. Yeah. So what I am uh, what I'm doing, going to do is I am going to exchange this. I agree with uh, the points raised by uh, Dr. Warakan that it will be nice to get it, uh, the, the sheath, into the left ventricle if possible. Uh, Varakan, what uh, what sort of device would you think about? Well, that that's a very challenging question you asked me. You know, uh, at the moment I I cannot uh, decide until I see the angio. But likely, um, 
uh, because there is no rim at all underneath the aorta. So if you have eccentric device, that probably will be uh, the one. But um, you know, it it's not that stable because it's long tunnel. Uh, then I would think about uh, perhaps M4 or the vascular plug at the moment. Uh, uh, okay, I I I uh, agree that actually an, an asymmetric device, the original amplads are perimembranous VSD is possibly a good idea in the presence of absence of aortic margin. Uh, now the, the, the other two uh, devices that you were mentioning uh, will have a little bit of uh, artery forceps, will have a little bit of protrusion into the aortic valve. So uh, yeah, totally so agree, Shiva. So, so that's why I think we, we will decide again after you do proper ten, injection and then you take Let me design. pick on 10. Um, ten. Uh, yeah. Options of device. I know you said an anatomy needs better definition, but uh, what are you thinking in terms of options for devices? Uh, uh, for me, the best device for this morphology is the BFN Corey. But uh, in case uh, he doesn't have the device, maybe ideal one also okay, but uh, the device well. should be put back inside well. the device. And uh, the device, the left side, this of the device should parallel and underneath the 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 valve, and so we can avoid the aortic valve problem. Okay, all right. So Shiva, um, we don't you... we don't have a PFM coil. Neither do we have a great experience like Dr. Tin with the PFM coils. Uh, however, we have used. Uh, uh, a lot of the old generation amplads are perimembranous. Uh, asymmetric device and uh, rotating it around and getting the platinum marker towards the left ventricle and uh, I, 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 in some sense it possibly is a, is a good idea because uh, we, uh, we, we here we are secure with the membranous septum uh, probably the heart block problem is not there so we, we may be uh, if you are able to get the asymmetric device perfectly positioned, that may be a good option. Okay. So, Shiva, let me just uh, ask uh, Amitabh again, in terms of a bit whatever devices are available in India, for example, uh, Amitabh, there's zero rim, so there's no rim under the aortic valve. So, what are your, uh, what would you be thinking in terms of what device to use here? I, I'm not able to hear Amitabh. No, we can't either. Uh, are you still there's used to it? There is a question uh, as well uh, suggesting yeah. the the corner, the okay. MFO life tech device, whether you consider this an option. Okay. Amita, uh, yeah. no, go ahead. Yes, sir. good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, everyone. So the commonest ones which we use under these conditions uh, the, is a one-sided device because of, to spare the other structures, there's an ADO1. But I guess here the aortic rim is zero, as you were saying. Go so, to the uh, L -L electrical L device would be the most useful one here. Though I should say that it is not easily available at all centers. We have to order it previously. Which the other device? One, sorry, which uh, was put asked, the twelve which millimeter. Device, open it here. The other uh, ten millimeter. Open it here. Pardon? Ten and twelve. Which both device open. were you saying? Uh, I didn't catch it. So the asymmetric one. The asymmetric de okay. device. device. All right. Yeah. And the other one uh, recently, the LifeTech company has also come up with one. And uh, the MFO device, which Dr. Tin was telling, probably I wouldn't prefer the MFO here because it's a double disc and also the aortic rim is almost zero, as you said. So probably I wouldn't be so safe to consider the MFO under this condition. Okay. I notice Alan Fress has his hand up. Perhaps he has a question. Alan? Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, well, I, I, I was just saying that uh, uh, for all these devices, uh, I, I prefer to use uh, the retrograde approach uh, because uh, it is uh, obviously shorter, simple, and uh, uh, it is possible uh, as uh, if you use a symmetric uh, soft device, which is what I uh, always use uh, in, uh, in these cases. Uh, but it would be interesting, it would be another debate uh, one of the reasons also is, um, even if it is not the case of this defect, many of these outlet or perimembranous defect has also uh, inlet extension. And then when you go retrogradely, you have always uh, a, a small risk to uh, um, um, compromise the function of the tracheostomy valve. While with retrogradely, you don't have uh, this risk. Thank you. Thank you, Alan. 
show so, the top. Uh, Shiva, we can see the calcification a lot better now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Actually, I'm trying the old noodle wire uh, shack uh, in order to get it into the left ventricle. And once I get it into the left ventricle, okay, now. While you're doing that, Sebastian makes a comment that the um, MFO device can be can be delivered by either retrograde or anti-grade approach. Um, I just want, may I make a comment, Jack, please? Yes, please. Yes, go ahead. Um, yes. Shiva, you're doing a nice job. We'll try not to distract you, but the uh, calcium is worth just uh, putting in the back of your mind, not because I think it will interfere with your catheter manipulation so much, but that if you don't get a really good seal with your device, a combination of residual flow, metal, and calcium does increase the risk of post-implant hemolysis. So just put that at the back of your mind, uh, because if you have residual flow, it's worth keeping the patient in hospital and just being sure about that. OK, OK, yeah. I, I do agree uh, with you, Neil. Uh, uh, the some, in some cases, that residual uh, leak will be very annoying. Uh, actually, th what uh, what happened now, as you are observing, we I couldn't get my uh, I couldn't get my sheet. So now I'm again going to retry. Leave it. Looks nice position now. What do you think, Tim? Good position for you. Uh, uh, I think it's very difficult for advancing the sheet into the left ventricle due to the very sharp angulation. And uh, we, we want to get the best image when the sheet inside the left ventricle. But uh, maybe it's tight time and uh, it's very difficult. Siva, you can do angle with the sheet inside the uh, uh, sentinel or the Internal also. memory artery catheter. Yes, I... I uh... For a very long time, obviously, I'm retired. I haven't closed the BST for years now, but I used to just deliver from the ascending aorta. I'm trying to think who taught me that. Might have been forced, I guess. Um, but you just push out a little olive of the device and just bring it through the aortic valve, protruding from the sheath, and then let it sort of settle in the left ventricular outflow. Get, get a wire. Uh, the problem in this uh, position uh, of the BSD is that you haven't got enough support when you pull the sheath back yeah, to just sure. below the aortic valve. It pops back into the right ventricle rather Agreed. than it, It's difficult either way. But yeah. yeah. So now, what? Since uh, uh, the uh, as pointed out by Tin, uh, the sheath is quite uh, uh, rigid. And so what I'm trying to do now is, I'm getting an internal mammary artery catheter out. And now I'm going to pull back my sheath. And an idea, Shiva. Well, Warwick, and you don't know what he's trying to do yet. <laughs> if I guess you try to put IMA into the LV and then use that as a guiding catheter, yeah, a guideline. Yeah. Yes. It's a nice I haven't idea. tried that before, but that's a brilliant idea, Shiva. Yeah, great idea. Yeah. If it works. <laughs> Just slip it back again into the RV. RV. Okay. Again, get the dilator for me. Get me the dilator, please. Don't drop it. Get the internal memory again ready, sister. I will just get the dilator, go inside, and then. Yeah, as uh, it's uh, the. I'm finding the rigidity of the uh, sheath. Uh, this, is a, this is a braided. Uh, uh, 10 French sheet, and so it is. Uh, Mr. Flush. The wire came out. Okay. Huh? Holding? You almost want to kink the wire and push it downwards uh, 
this is a noodle uh, this is a noodle yeah. noodle wire yeah. uh, shack and so, so yeah anybody else uh, have suggestions i want another artery forceps Uh, yep. uh, if you want to go to the LV, maybe you keep the later inside. Okay. Yeah, keep the later inside and push everything into the LV. The later you can change the direction okay. of the sheet. I, I, Without the later, you cannot. I, I first tried it, uh, Tin. Now, now that you have told me again, I will retry. The, the dilated aortic valve, uh, the aortic annulus is not making the uh, wire fall freely into the LV. Right, let me see. Alan, Alan Fresh, you still with us? Any suggestions? Uh, uh, yes. Uh, uh, well, I. Again, this is, uh, I, I don't have too much experience. Well, I, I do this technique only for muscular uh, VSDs. So uh, I don't have a technical suggestion here. But let's see how it goes, uh, depending on the device in implantation. I'd be happy to comment at this time. So Sebastian? Sebastian? Yeah. Um, another option we, we use sometimes for um, muscular VSD in small children is to come from a transceptor approach. Um, through the left, uh, through the left atrium, and then the left ventricle, and then you can um, do so you get me again internal memory mm -hmm. atrium, Peter. A transeptal atrial approach or transeptal ventricular approach. Transeptal uh, atrial approach. Yes. Then from the right to, to the left atrium, then you go to the left ventricle. You can uh, press back. the VSD from the left ventricle leave it, leave it. and do Understood. the loop again that directly leave it. to the left Come ventricle and not to the outer. Thank this you. Is, uh, Shiva, did you hear Sebastian's? Suggestion? Yeah, it seems a little bit more uh, complex to me, Neil. Uh, 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 so I am I'm going back to that internal memory that I was originally uh, trying. Uh, uh, Zishan, can you come here? Don't allow it to see the. We've also got a suggestion from Mahmoud Nader, who's suggesting a stiff terumo next to the noodle wire into the LV and then try and change over the catheter. I haven't quite understood that, I don't think. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, the other option, uh, Shiva, is uh, once you've got your sheath in the uh, ascending aorta to do an LV angio just to get better uh, uh, an anatomical details of the VSD before you try it. Yeah, yeah, much. yeah, yeah, true. I actually, I am planning to get uh, another angiogram with the sheath but now for that i have to get the uh, sheath uh, we lost you yeah we lost shiva can you can you hear me now it's rare for him to stop speaking so, uh, <laughs> ye, uh, yes we do intermittently <laughs> okay uh, what what were you saying sorry shiva uh, uh, sec i yeah, i wanted to get my sheath across into the uh, left ventricle, but uh, now if suppose if I am not getting it, maybe I will try to uh, see the, the the plan was to try an asymmetric device initially. However, uh, now that I'm facing uh, technical difficulties in, uh, I might uh, think about uh, the technique that Tin had done and uh, Neil was telling form the form a tulip bud of the ADO device and then uh, bring it back. Uh, so now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to accept this position. Under transesophageal echocardiography, try to bring back a, a device. Uh, we measured around nine millimeters, so let, I will try with a. Shiva, Shiva, please, yep. uh, if we can do angio now. Yeah, and okay, okay. Uh, yeah, so uh, can you, I have to come out of the wire loop. OK, I'll get out the wire. Uh, can you get me pigtail. the pigtail again? Go with the pigtail. And sister, get me the wire. Get ready for an angiogram, uh, that same 75. Yeah. 
show me, uh, uh, show me. A okay. Oh, okay, okay. Wait, wait, wait. It's getting how does king. The, whilst you're doing that, Chiba, how does the VSD look with the sheath through it on TOE? Can you try on a TOE? Can you come to AP view? There was a kink in the pigtail. I'll try to rectify that pigtail. Can you come to AP? Shrija, have whilst a... you're doing that, if we see the TOE then. Echo, echo big. Echo big. Okay, echo big and fluoro small. Okay. Show me below my sheath. Keep showing me. I have to get rid of the loop. And to ask uh, for comment from who's doing the TOE? Uh, Dr. Srija. She's Srija, here. what yeah. do you think? Uh, and if you sort out the gains on the color again, scale increase and gain down, and then tell us. <coughs> Get to the same view. And Sri Jai, if we adjust the scale upwards yeah, and color it. gain down here. Scale go to around 70 or 80. I think you'll be fine coming yeah. from the ascending aorta. Mm. It's not increasing. Yeah. Slowly, of course. Scale is not increasing. Neil, it's like saying that the grapes are sore. I mean, actually, I tried to enter, <laughs> enter into the left ventricle, Neil, but I failed. So now I'm going to grab, drag the device from the iota. Yeah. So, Srija, what do you think of the color flow around the sheath now? Yeah, there are some flows seen. Uh, I'm not getting a proper image. Uh, Give, uh, 30 they ml are ml. around 50% of the original color flows without the sheath. Okay, make angio bigger. Shoot. This is a 10 French sheath varakan. Now freeze it. I, I can see about. Ah, go, go, next, 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 keep, keep moving, ah, okay, the previous frame, previous, previous, little before, uh, there is a fair amount of flow over again, mm. uh, this yeah. sheath is uh, 10 French with, uh, it's a braided sheath, the externally it looks like somewhere around 6 millimeter, I am planning to take a 1210 uh, duct occluder device, what is your thought? Yeah, I, I may try with my just say first. Say again, Warakan. Um, try, try. Yeah, I, I I would try what what you were mentioned first. Uh, Twelve, 12 10. ten. But but again, um, you know, it's kind of borderline to me. It's Maybe help. twelve fourteen is safer. Okay, okay. fourteen twelve. Uh, uh, but Edivo. Yeah, what? but but the point would be, it looked like a tunnel now. Um, and um, I'm not sure whether the length is enough or not, but we'll see. Maybe, I think we, uh, we don't have much choice at the moment. Tin, um, others, the what do you say? Thermo. Thermo. Yeah. I think 1210 is too big. 1210 is too yeah. big? Yeah. But, uh, but, but, but Neil, I got a uh, echo dimension of around 9 to 10 millimeter. Yeah. yeah. Tin? Yeah. I, I don't think we can try with a very big uh, device uh, for totally uh, uh, closer. I think the two two check is very separate from yeah. together, and uh, maybe we need two devices. The first device maybe 10, 12, or 10, uh, 8, uh, uh, ideal two, and the second device for the upper home maybe we use a small device, ideal two. I think it's a bad choice for this reason. Don't so try to use very big device for only uh, for for this complication complicated code. Yeah, so ten, if you were thinking of two devices, would you then put a buddy wire along, uh, a technique as well, so that you, because otherwise it may be difficult to recross after the first device. Okay, uh, yeah, I uh, probably, probably what we'll do is we'll try with a 12, 10 first. Uh, show that picture, last picture again. It's not a pair. There is some air I'm because I'm the, the sheath is there, large sheath is there. I'm uh, beginning to think about uh, AVP2 now. AVP2? That's what I'm yes. I was thinking. Yes. Uh, Alain? 
Yes, definitely. Uh, I, I, I think uh, the problem with, uh, with the device you mentioned, you, you're going to have uh, too much uh, space, uh, especially towards the Orca with, uh, with the disks, whereas the IDP2, uh, the disks are the same uh, uh, length and uh, same diameter, and then you can drop only uh, one disk on the aortic side and the central uh, disk uh, and the distal disk, uh, everything on the RV side and usually it, uh, it, it is uh, very stable. Um, you have to take uh, at least uh, four millimeters uh, uh, larger than uh, the color uh, uh, diameter me, uh, of the TOE for this. So that's me, probably uh, gonna 12 or 14. 1210 device, 1210 AD01. Uh, Alain, uh, uh, I, I, uh, I know that your, uh, your favorite device is vascular plug. The vascular plug of, uh, suppose this is a 10 millimeter hole and I have to take a 16 plug. It will have a 12 millimeter length between the, the one disc to the other disc. Uh, so, where is it going? I want a... Yeah, I, 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 I agree. This is not, uh, look, sometimes this looks a little bit uh, ugly uh, because you have protrusion on the RV side, but it has never caused uh, any Number problem in my again. experience. Number um, so uh, we, we, we have had a, a similar, uh, well, maybe not similar, relatively similar adult case uh, we did uh, two days ago with uh, Sebastian and we ended up really putting uh, 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 18 millimeter AVP2. But in this case, sometimes, and, and I can see that you have a, a bit of distance uh, between the patch and the aorta on the TOE view, uh, sometimes you can uh, pull a little bit of device and then have the waste in the middle disc, but this is uh, very rare. Most of the time, you just put one uh, disc on the LV side and the rest on the RV side, and it is very stable. Shiva, yes, uh, you uh, you cho choose a device that you're comfortable with. So uh, these were just lots of points of a dis discussion, I think. So which Shaq, uh, Shaq, I am actually planning to take a 1210 uh, ADO one device. Yeah. Uh, uh, try to create a ball just below the aortic cusp uh, yeah. and uh, see how things are. There is some amount of aortic regurgitation now because one of my large 10 French braided sheath is passing through. So I will be able to assess the aortic valve only when uh, I, I take out the sheath. As you had uh, mentioned earlier, I am using a body wire. Uh, Shiva, on sorry, Shiva, yes. Shiva, sorry, interrupting. Yep. Don't forget to use Trivisio, please. Uh, don't forget to use a Trevisio. Trevisio cable. cable. Tre yeah, I am using a Trevisio. I am using a Trevisio. Yeah. Uh, in fact, the last case also I used a Trevisio because uh, all sorts of angulation it's going to be accepting. So now uh, this is uh, okay. This is. So this is twelve ten, is it? This is a twelve. Yeah, twelve ten eighty one. There is a body wire across. Yeah. And uh, Srija, you have to show me. Uh, now, this uh, I th is the pressure a little on the lower side. Can you tell the anesthetist to just reduce the dose of the, the anesthesia agents that is going on, whether it is Zamdex or whatever it is? That's a very brave, that's a very brave statement, uh, Shiva, to be <laughs> telling the anesthetist how to manage. Get the anesthetist <laughs> inside anesthesia. the room. <laughs> <laughs> yes. uh, Tell them to cut down it, the gas also. May, maybe yeah. things are different in the <laughs> MMM. Yeah. Okay. So now I'm I'm opening out the disc a little bit. Perfect. That's enough. Oh. Mm. I'll get it back, Neil. And Srija, there's no color. I, I just want the device to be seen continuously. In, yeah, indeed. Uh, can you uh, can you get uh, some angio done uh, now? Uh, give about a small amount, 20 ml at 18 rate. You are ready? Yeah. I'm just at that level. Yeah, you're not far away, but you're, you've got quite a lot of the device out. Maybe you could just um, make like an olive shape. That's at the moment, uh, why not try and see it on the TOE? Yeah, that's a good idea too. That's good. I like that, uh, Shiva. Oh. Okay. 
Uh, so yeah, probably I'll see. So what's the echo, what's the echo like? Yeah, we will see the echo. Let, let, first, let me reconfirm with the angiogram. Uh, shoot one picture now. It was so quick. Uh, I didn't. Twenty-five. See it on the oh, sorry, sorry. Just show that. Uh, show that uh, fluoro again. I recorded it on a scene. Uh, show this. I am showing now the the sequence. Yeah. So we yeah, just yeah. dropped in and. Uh, the disc is now just below the aortic valve, and uh, we are in the tunnel. Uh, so uh, you give about uh, 25 ml at 18 rate. Ah. Could we see echo, please? How does it look on the uh, yeah, echo? OK. Srija, now show the echo. Uh, this is needed. Can I? Uh, Srija, uh, uh, Shaq, what we are seeing here is uh, the vertical tunnel we are now uh, closing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And the, the, the disc is actually sitting on the top. Yeah. So, Srija, use the cursor and point out where we where Yeah, you I'm just trying to. Yeah, you can see it now. Uh, first, look at the aortic yeah. regurgitation, Srija, so that we are sure that AR is not very significant. There is some amount there of are AR. Two jets of AR. Yeah, but you, you've got a catheter. I through, have got a yeah, catheter no. inside. And there was some before as well. So. Yeah. The pigtail is inside, I guess. The pigtail is crossing the aortic valve. Yes, yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. The yeah. Is across. What I'll do is I'll take out this body wire now so uh, that the clear. device is able to open out nicely across because the body wire may be preventing a, a proper... Uh, I'll Indeed. Uh, can, Indeed. Can, you, can you get the echo uh, fluoro bigger? Oh, Indeed, but I think the body wire was a really good idea in the context of the instability or potential instability of the sheath. Uh, no, uh, nice. <laughs> in fact, Warakan's suggestion of that uh, Trevisio cable, uh, so the Trevisio is only allowing this sort of uh, an angle and still the device is uh, remaining OK. Uh, Srija, now show me the echo. Just remind me of the size of the device. 1210. 1210. This is 1210, and uh, our echo measurements were around 9 to 10. Yeah. The so 1210 is the one I thought was a yeah. bit. Yeah, Srija so is finding problem because it is parallel to the right wrong. ventricular outflow you track. Okay, now, now color. It looks okay. See, the, yeah, the amount fine. of RV flow is less. Of course, the pa calcified pericardium is preventing the color that is distal to the pericardial patch to be vis visualized. I'll shoot another it's picture no significant now. Flow. Give a uh, little larger volume, 30 ml at uh, 18 rate. Uh, who, who on, uh, any questions from attendees? Can you go to the same position? Uh, not, not at this moment, Shaq. Okay. Um, so maybe make the picture yeah. bigger. And Sebastian. Yeah. Sebastian. Yeah. Yeah. Can you? No, I yeah. can hear you. Are you happy with this device and position now? Uh, I'm very interested by the position because it's really the channel and, and not really the VSD that is closed, and I'm really. Um, well, the tunnel is part of the VSD, really, isn't it? But yeah, okay. Good yeah, comment, I mean? it's, Shiva. It's and there's below, a below in the right ventricle. And there's a superior. Uh, show the picture. Like asking yeah. on the angio, you can see that there is a, there's no, a run the picture on the top of the device towards Freeze the it. right ventricle. Freeze it. Yeah, now go back. See the pouch that is coming superiorly is hitting against the RV wall, and there is no blood that is going across. Then there is that 90 degree turn and uh, yeah, yeah, jet that was going very inferiorly where the belly of our 1210 device is sitting. And in echocardiogram, it looks uh, OK. Uh, show this, uh, run this picture. And on angio, it looks like less flow as well. Yeah, yeah even echo is not showing any significant uh, VSD flows. There is, there is puffing of the contrast through the device. Make it mag, zoom it. Okay, bring it, bring it towards, uh, or else, or else, run it. Let's see, run it, run it. So, Shaq, there is a question now whether the other hole superiorly should be addressed, um, and that's, a, I think, a good question. Uh, well, yeah, but um, uh, Shiva has answered that because he says there's a pouch without any flow going through. Uh, uh, into the can RV. you, without mag, you show so that it's very even more clearer.
extract that a superior pouch probably is not freely communicating into the RV cavity. Let me do one thing. I uh, will probably release the device and then make uh, an another injection. What, what do you say? Sri Jai, no may, may, may I say something, sir? Yes, yes. Yeah, um, if you can exchange the picture to the JR MPA catheter and just selective angio just at the pouch Hepparin before you release this. Yes. Something on the cusp. Something on the? Cusp RCC. Uh, AR alone, you check it, Srija. Now uh, I, I have come out totally. Uh, can you get me uh, end hole catheter? Yes, like uh, very trivial. Only. Yeah, RCA is okay. Uh, can you get this this guy yeah. catheter? Uh, Take it out. Sure. Right. We can see the, the residual on echo clearly. Maybe we the echo picture is bigger and uh, we can check any residual on yeah, echo, echo big. Echo big. Uh, may I have a question to you? Yes. When let it in place and uh, close the, the upper part with the edge two six millimeter, uh, then you have closed the total uh, flow through the VST pouch. Uh, show me the uh, echo bigger. There are no significant flows. Yeah, I and mean, there's no point in chasing those pou that pouch if there's no flow into yeah, the Yeah, yeah, there's no I flows into no, the RV. I, 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 I think I, that pouch is almost blind, sir. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Superior pouch is blind. Yeah. I, I actually, Warakan asked me to do a yeah, yeah, pouch angiogram, so okay, I, so I will. Uh, no, no, I'll do it. Okay, that's fine. I'm trying it. I'm trying it. Uh, I think we're making it a bit yeah, more okay, complicated, okay. aren't we now? This dilated aortic root was giving me some difficulty in entering, uh, so let me see. Is there something on the aortic valve? Uh, uh, like what? There is a mobile uh, mass. Is, is there something on the aortic valve? Some, uh, some loose structure? structure. That's what I was asking. No. Uh, like color, color, and show me whether there is any. No, AR is not there, but there is. AR is not there. Okay. Man, only the previous AR. Okay. Uh, yeah, we, I, uh, AR is not there. Le, uh, second, you check once AR. ACT. Heparin is. Okay. okay, give uh, yes, check ACT and give one more dose of heparin around three thousand. I gave five thousand. I'm I'm trying to come into the pouch. Can you make the this one bigger, uh, fluoro bigger? Okay. Show me the. Uh, uh, can give me contrast in a cup. Okay, show me this. That is actually going through a muscular uh, sleeve as I was pushing the, it got pumped out. Uh, run this picture. What is the, what is the, uh, what do you want to tell Srija? No, no, that superior defect is there, no? so ah. the flows are there. Ah. It has gone into that pouch, the device. Ah. Yeah, it has gone into the pouch. Yeah, but, but our. F I doubt whether. Can you can you get me another uh, thermowire? Uh, thermowire again. I'll try to recross. It should have been. Is there is there a flow there significant? There is some flow. Some flow is there. Yeah, in a different angle. Flow where through the pouch? Yeah. Uh, Show the I can only uh, see the exit into the uh, right ventricle. Exit? Yeah. But there was some, let me just put a grade in.
Zishan, so, uh, can you come and hold my catheter? I, I'll try to cross. If it is not, uh, a, I'm not able to cross, that means it's muscle. Thank. Yeah. I think we're trying to gild a lily here. Yeah, I, you know, I, I think um, the main defect is the one where the device is, and we should make a decision about releasing that and not worry about the pouch. I agree. Anybody uh, got anything to say about that? I think Alan it, thinks I, a I, bigger I, device would have been slightly better. Yeah, I'm not able um, to. I'm not able to push the device, uh, push the wire through that pouch uh, shack. I think it's a muscular pouch. It's not. Uh, there is not too much of lumen there. Anyway, let me let me again. But Shiva, e even if there was a little leak there, um, trying to address it now is going to be hazardous in the context of your device, which is sitting nicely. Yeah. And uh, you might. Even if you want to address it, you might want to do that in a few weeks' time when you've got some. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 think I, I do. Shiva, I, I do Shiva, agree. You've dealt with the main defect, which was the problem. So, or, or we haven't there? dealt with it because you've still got the device attached. But you're in a good <laughs> position. Make a decision about that and not worry about this pouch. Because you, you know, uh, there's flow it's, uh, that you it's can uh, see, it, which is still yeah. over spilling from the through the device as well. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, the pouch is uh, contracting and squeezing the contrast uh, back into the LVOT. Yeah. So I, 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 I'm, I it, it is convincing for me that probably the amount of blood outside the device is negligible. So I am, I am. Uh, Shiva. Yes. We have do you have an MVP? Then you can uh, put it in over this wire, uh, over this uh, catheter. <laughs> don't don't even think about it. <laughs> very, so, very so pa Pablo uh, Tome is asking the technique about the body wire in the sheath, and the fact that you have, if you like, two devices going through the sheath. How do you control the blood loss at the back end of the sheath, uh, or is yeah, it the yeah. fact that you've got enough hardware in there that it seals the sheath? Uh, no, no, actually, sure. Neil, uh, your point is correct. There was, there is quite a lot of bloody field here. There is some, when I have the cable plus the body wire both going across, it is not perfectly hemostatic, and so uh, there is there is quite a lot of blood loss. I do agree, and that too, uh, my, uh, my sheath was actually in the ascending aorta. So uh, it's true that there is a, see that, actually that, that pouch is not significant, Neil. It, it looks like I am. Uh, no, no, I think you've done a very nice job, Siva, and you can, you can address residual shunts at a later date. Just take care about the concern for hemolysis. And it was Pablo Tome who asked the question about uh, leakage at the back end of the sheet. Yeah. Pablo, I don't think uh, there's think, an easy um, way. Shack, Shack, if I, if you give me around, uh, uh, I think we, we have around 12 minutes more. I can show one transvenous crossing of a VSD and closure uh, in a child without arterial access. Hey, if that is okay for you, within within yes, five minutes, within 10 minutes, right. we'll try to complete. It's 10 minutes, no more. Yeah, 10 minutes, no more. Correct. Uh, get me one glove, please. And, and whilst you're doing that, Pablo asked that question because he saw get so me. much blood on the groin. Uh, uh, oh, oh, yeah. Uh, that actually, I told Shack, uh, I told Neil. That, no, I, I want a gown. Uh, whenever we have a 10 French non cook sheet, which is not very highly hemostatic, and then you have a body wire as well as a cable across, that hemostatic valve is not very good. And so